This is the art book of Princess Mononoke, uh, one of the greatest animated films by Studio Ghibli, and one of my personal favorites. This book features a bunch of concept sketches and backgrounds and cell art, uh, layout drawings, and if you're a fan of the film, you will definitely get a lot out of this. Um, I mean, a lot of it, like this, is a full background, and you might not even see all the details in the actual film because a lot of the backgrounds are bigger than what you'll actually see. And also, it's just nice to be able to look at the artwork at your own pace, whereas in a film, the pace is dictated for you, and you're only looking at these lush scenes for seconds at a time. With this, you can just sit down and absorb the artistry. Like, each individual frame is just so much thought and care goes into it. Like this uh, demon god here with all these tendrils. And it talks a little bit about how they <clears throat> did some of this towards the end of the book. Um, like, like these tendrils on Ashitaka's arm. This was actually using CGI. Um, this is a wireframe. These tendrils were made in a program. Um, and then they used soft image or, or tune shader to uh, give it the 2D look on top of it. But they just it's amazing how masterfully they incorporated 3D elements with um, 2D film like a lot of films today they don't even do it that well where it's really obvious what parts are CGI in certain anime versus you know more hand-drawn style but of course everything's basically done digitally now in terms of ink and paint um, but this was the first studio Ghibli film to rely heavily on digital ink and paint but of course all the backgrounds were painted by hand and the actual animation was drawn by hand on paper but um, all they did a lot of compositing digitally and coloring like I said digitally with digital ink and paint and some scenes they actually merged the two where some parts were uh, some anim animated characters would be done by hand and they would perfectly match the digital parts. This scene in the movie always makes me tear up where he's where Ashitaka is leaving his little village to go off and try to find a cure for the curse. Um, th this scene has some really nice parallax scrolling of these mountains going by. It gives it a, a very strong sense of depth and scale. And oh yeah, at the beginning of this book is actually a bunch of poems. Uh, there's production art and then a preliminary concept sketch of Princess Mononoke. The wolf kind of looks like the never-ending story dragon right there. But at the beginning, there's these poems that Miyazaki wrote himself about different beings in the film, like the deer spirit, uh, Yakul, and the Kodama tree spirits. And the backgrounds are, of course, of the forest. It's a very serene and beautiful forest on the surface, but it's definitely not somewhere you'd want to live. It's full of these angry gods and humans battling each other. Um, some concept sketches for Ashitaka. But yeah, like the Miyazaki always does his concept sketches. He always uses watercolors to suggest what kind of colors should be in the film. And I think with watercolors, it's you can fill it up really quick. So the images just pour out of his hand very quickly. 
but it has like the perfect level of detail to where it's not overly detailed, but he's giving all the information you need to turn this into these finished pieces. Um, yeah, like I need to rewatch the film after looking through this art book because there's so many visuals in here that you just take for granted when you're when you're watching the movie when you're engrossed in the film and which that's a sign of a good film when you're, you know when you're just totally lost in the story there's the night walker this used a lot of uh, particle effects so um, like the little tendrils coming out of this character and all these little star looking things these are particle effects they did in a computer and they can posited it digitally with the other hand-drawn elements. They did it so masterfully. But this was like the most obvious type of effects where when I watched it, I could tell um, they were using some kind of effects, some concept art for the forest spirit. I love this scene in the movie where he's walking and uh, stuff is growing and dying. There's the concept art for it. And then, yeah, it's just, you can just stare at these images so long and catch something new each time. But I'd say, oh, maybe 70% of this book is background art or like in some shots with the movie showing the fully you know, composited scene with the cell art and the background art. Um, but there is, towards the end, they show a little bit more in-depth of how they actually accomplished this. And I'd like if more art books did stuff like that, where they talk about the technical aspects of the film. And uh, I wish the other art books of the Studio Ghibli films did it as well, because their techniques are always evolving. But like I said, this was uh, like a big change in their production style where after this they relied a lot more on computers so this was kind of like their last truly uh, like old school traditionally animated film but they they really just oh and it was actually he was gonna retire after this one so he was like 55 when they were working on this, um, which is crazy. It's like, then he made Spirited Away, and that's obviously ground, it's a masterpiece. And so I saw this movie in ninth grade and I just started the DVD in a random place. I had a bad habit of getting DVDs and starting at random places just to see what it would be like. And this was the first scene I ever saw. The the boar god possessed by these intestinal looking worms screaming out of his face super fast and wiggling about these scary eyes staring at you it really really freaked me out but like i was just totally captivated and i rewatched this scene a few times before i even started the movie properly but at the end of this book they actually have a production diary where they talk about um each day it's like a journal like someone came in to do voice acting on this day uh, miyazaki scolded the younger animators on this day for slacking off and that was actually there was a story about this where uh, some of the younger animators were, weren't working fast enough so as punishment he made them do the in-betweens on this scene that was really technical and nobody wanted to really do so that was their punishment some s storyboards for that for it um, but the they were always like kind of behind schedule on this film 
and they they hired a bunch of other animators from other studios to come in um, but they were having some trouble finding people because there were rumors going around that Miyazaki was pretty savage to his workers and pretty hard to work with so a lot of people were hesitant um, but it's just the price you pay for this type of qualities like you have to have an insane work ethic and not cut any corners so this stuff right here is actually layouts that were drawn by Miyazaki himself normally there'd be a layout artist who would take his storyboards and then make these these shots that have further instructions on how to uh, composite the different layers of background art and instructions on how the characters will move about um, but they were so rushed and Miyazaki after he completed his storyboards uh, I can't remember his name Toshio Suzuki I think the producer he was not satisfied with the ending of this movie and he asked Miyazaki if he really thinks it should end this way so at the last minute uh, Miyazaki did the the final layouts for the last few minutes of the entire movie and that's what this is right here um, and then this chapter which lasts like 10 or so pages I wish this was more I wish they'd make like full books of this type of stuff documenting the exact programs the exact technology and methods and animation techniques that they use to achieve the different looks because it can be really helpful for aspiring animators but also just as a historical document detailing exactly what the blueprint was of of laying out what you're seeing on the screen um, but this right here is like I was talking about before the tendrils on Ashitaka's arm this is the finished frame right here and then these are the layers that are composited the line art and then the colored art the background and the final image and over here is the wireframe and the uh, 3d rendering of the tendrils and then after it's gone the after it's undergone the digital paint to look like finished cell art and it'll blend in with the other art a big benefit to incorporating computer graphics into a hand-drawn film is that for convey conveying movement that's going into the screen it's extremely labor intensive to animate the background so in other words to have to have a panning uh, scene where something's moving from left to right or right to left that's a lot easier because you can literally have one background drawing that moves from left to right or right to left up and down it conveys that movement but if you have if you're wanting to show um, a character like follow the character moving into the screen and the backgrounds moving with them you'd have to animate every single frame of that background moving but with mapping you have this uh, right here this checkered or chessboard looking pattern what they do is they'd actually paint a picture the background and then it would be tracked onto this this 3d depth pattern that would be used to show the speed and um, give the impression that that you're moving in depth through the background like the camera is tracking forward so they did that on a few scenes and some other stuff they did was um, like this scene where the demon spirit rots away. Uh, they did this by superimposing three shots together and then the, the transitions were uh, automated digitally. But originally this uh, melting face of the boar god into a skeleton was animated by hand but they found that um, 
the the line work it wasn't the way they they copied it or the way it was picked up by the the camera it it didn't have the effect they were looking for to have the smooth melting transition so the animators that worked on the scene in the production diary it talks about how the animators that worked on the scene and they had their hundreds and hundreds of frames thrown away they were very very discouraged um, so and I'm sure anyone who's worked on something where you've had your work cut or edited out it's it can definitely feel like you feel it in your gut because you put so much time and so much life energy into it um, and then this talks a little bit about the particle system which was used to add different kinds of effects and colors and little patterns at the time the the types of computer graphics um, it couldn't like they uh, didn't want to use it to overpower the hand-drawn aesthetic so a lot of how they were able to incorporate it was just smart use of color and adding some little blurring effects to take the harshness of the particles out and to make it blend in a little better um, and another benefit of um, using more computer type technology for compositing is that they could layer an infinite number of layers without losing any type of fidelity. Like this shot here it talks about how this shot of uh, Lady Iboshi is composited with 11 layers. So they have the sky, smoke, and then some like fire effects and then in the front there's some flames flying past her if this was done with the multi-plane camera you would actually have slight loss of detail the more layers of cells you add because even though cells they're these transparent pieces of plastic that or paper that you're painting on all these so-called transparent layers it's not 100 percent transparent so it will start to build up is start to build up a kind of graying effect but and another benefit is infinite colors you can they talked about here how they had like infinite colors whereas before you'd only have a couple hundred colors to choose from at most for the inking process but it didn't really change it that much because still like they have color schemes and color theory where you you wouldn't add 20,000 colors into a shot anyways but it just made the process of coloring so much faster because before it cost a lot of money to buy all the cells and all the ink and paint stuff and then scanning it but this completely eliminated an entire process entire like a bunch saved a lot of money and resources and it's just so much faster easier to keep track of easier to correct mistakes like if you paint the wrong color digitally you just push a button and it flood fills the whole piece that's just some of my thoughts on the princess mononoke art book what are your favorite films from uh miyazaki or just studio ghibli in general i'd like to know mine I'd say, well, it fluctuates, but uh, just top three for how I'm feeling right now. It would be Princess Mononoke, uh, Spirited Away, and um, well, Ponyo, I really appreciate for the animation style, the fluidity, the constant moving of shapes, and the, the uh, glossy, slimy highlights and shading on everything has had a huge influence on how I like to shade and cell shade my animation um, but as far as a film it's it's not in my top three uh, I'm more pre-spirited away type of guy for the more like old school tra aesthetic um, and I like like uh, there was a lot more violence in in the earlier 
Miyazaki films, especially in Princess Mononoke, which I appreciate. Not be, not because it's like done in an untasteful way, but because the, the themes are a little more mature and I tend to gravitate not well I don't gravitate towards more mature themes necessarily but I like that there's just a slight edge to some of the earlier stuff um, but I like I like all I like everything he's made to be honest but like top three it would, it would be Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away and I'm gonna have to say Nausicaa just because the the uh, manga impacted me so much I, I feel like the manga is is much is a greater overall story than the film but just the artwork in the film had a huge influence the sci-fi and it kind of has a mobius sense of scale and and uh otherworldliness to it so just as far as the artistry i'd say those are my top three at the moment but i like to hear what yours are or if there's any uh, recommended animes or animation in general that I should check out. I've been a little out of the loop, just buried in work myself at the moment, hoping to have more time to do tutorials and stuff like this where I'm not just staring at a screen all day, drawing one frame after another and having people tell me to change it uh anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video